Israel and the bath words because these ones are Great. harder for me to read, which is lots of... <laughs> sure. Well, actually, I can see that we're starting the streaming right now. So there's just a few minutes left. Um, yeah, sure. Um, I'll, I'll be I'll be honored to read that. <laughs> I'll try my best. So we'll just wait a few more minutes. So what? Are we already streamed? So yeah. Yes, we are. You will introduce of, um, yourself and me. Sorry. Um, yes. Well, I mean, I was thinking I have a little text about you, but you're also welcome to introduce yourself, actually, because migration about is about telling your story in your own way. So I figured actually you should be the one introducing yourself. Yeah, you can introduce it, and if 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 needed, I'll add one or two things. What uh, I I saw what you read you wrote, so I yeah, I think you can do it. Wait a second, I'll just, um, I'll clean my nose for one moment. <laughs> it's okay, don't forget, we're already live. All right. Great, we'll give it two more minutes. Is it the same link we published on the on the Facebook event? Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah, we're going live in a minute now. I can see there are 13 people waiting already. You speak Hebrew also, Maya? I do. I do. Um, I studied it a bit on the side. I used to be better, but then I started learning Arabic a few years ago. It kind of overtook my Hebrew, and I got very confused studying both at the same time. Really? So I, yeah, so I can get by, but it's a lot harder for me to, to speak. Wow. Okay, great. We are actually online. My team tells me, so um, welcome to all of you in front of your screens uh, watching our live stream um, with the next migration event. Welcome to Mati. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've really been looking forward to um, this event for you uh, with, for many months now. Um, it's my pleasure to host this reading for you today. Um, my name is Maya. Um, and I'm here representing migration. For those of you who don't know, we're an interdisciplinary storytelling initiative who seeks to um, empower migrant and people with migrant backgrounds to tell their stories in their own way. And when we were putting together the program, um, we knew that we really wanted to include your work. We were really moved by um, your poetry and so, we're very happy. We first wanted to have this festival in March, then of course COVID happened. So now we're really happy to have you, Mati, here on this online series. Thank, Thank you, you so for much having for me. joining. Thank you very much for inviting me and uh, I'm happy that finally we are doing it. 
Same, same. Um, so a couple of words about uh, what we're doing today. Um, after a few words of introduction, we will do, um, you will read the poems of your anthology back at Haifa Berlin. It will be in Hebrew and German as the book is also in Hebrew and German. And we will get to talk about languages as well. And afterwards we will have a Q and A or it will accompany the reading. Um, so this will be about an hour. If people want to ask questions on the YouTube link, you're very welcome to do so. And I will try to include them. So uh, first of all, let me introduce Matti to you in a couple of words. Uh, Matti is a writer, poet, activist, author, and editor who was born in Haifa, Israel, but has been living in Berlin since 2013. He has been publishing widely on Mizrahi and Ashkenazi Jews, Israelis and Palestinian uh, issues, Middle Eastern refugees, and other social and political topics in Israel and in Europe. Over the last 10 years, he's been part of the ongoing activism to raise the voice, rights, and heritage to the Mizrahi people, um, Arab born Jews in Israel and all over the world. Um, and he's been a member of many initiatives, um, such as uh, the Mizrahi Democratic Rainbow. And he was also one of the founders of guerrilla culture, a um, movement in Israel that connected social change advocacy with poetic creativity. In Berlin, you might know him from the Poetic Hafle, a group that has created literature, music, and art performance events. Um, and he also published this anthology back at Haifa Berlin, which we're very happy to share with you today. Um, is there anything you would like to add, Matti, on this uh, account? Um, yeah, I'm also uh, only one thing because uh, we have an event next month, so a big symposium. Um, also founded together with the writer Ila Amit Abbas, um, a group called uh, Anu Nahna, um, Jews and Arabs Writing in Berlin, which uh, deals with, um, with the Middle Eastern culture of Berlin and all the interchange between them. And yeah, we have a big symposium, so um, uh, look for us and we can share the link later in the site. Great. Um, you can also find Mati and Migration on your social media accounts of choice. Um, and we can get back to that in, in the end. Um, so I would say um, to start off before I will share the screen so we can all read along with the poems. But before that, I wanted to ask you whether you can say a few words about how this book uh, was created, how it came together and why you decided to call it Baghdad Haifa Berlin. What is the journey you're taking us on? Okay, I'm just doing one pause to, uh, to wipe my nose again. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it is flu time. Sorry, I'm, I'm here. Um, um, what do I? Why did I call the book Haifa uh, Baghdad Berlin? Uh, Baghdad Haifa Berlin. That's the, the, the question. Um, my mother was born in Baghdad. I come from a family of the Baghdadian Jews, of the Iraqi Jews, which they say that um, goes back to the fall of the Second Temple, that the exiled Jews of of Zion. Um, so. Um, when I came to Berlin and when I immigrated to Berlin and there was an offer to, uh, to publish uh, my first collection of poems, a bilingual collection. So um, my editor, um, Mr. Rainer um, Winkel Maria, he, uh, he, offered, um, he offered the name, but I, I agree to that because it's like three cities that, that I'm taking um, in my way, the city that I never been and I cannot go because I'm an Israeli and I cannot fly to Baghdad and I long to go there. And Haifa, the place where I was born and uh, it's part of my identity. I cannot, um, I cannot reject it or deny it in any way. And um, 
Berlin, which is a place where I became my, the base of my writing and my my livelihood. Mm -hmm. And so following this journey in this reading, I wanted to start with um, one poem. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Just a second. Okay. Just bring it up. Okay. So you can see my screen, right? Yeah. Can you make it a bit big, bigger? Uh, um, yes, I will make it bigger yeah, for great. the reading. Okay, and I'll close this. This will be nicer. Okay, great. Yeah, okay. So, um, shall I start? Yes, please do. Okay. And. באמת, בבר מצווה פחדתי כל כך ממאבטחי כור ההיתוך, שנתתי להם בעסקה ללא טיעון את שרשרת זהב גאוותי. היום, אני מלקט את חרוזי ההיסטוריה של אבותיי, רחוק מחנויות התכשיטים המקומיות, ואוסף את, הפחן, את אבני החן של הזיכרון, שצללו לאיבוד באוקיינוס הבושה. וירקליש bei der Bar Mitzwa hätte ich solche Angst vor den Ottern der Schmelzziegels, dass ich ihnen widerspruchlos meinem ganzen Stolz abtrat, meine Goldkette. Heute verknüpfe ich in Versen meiner Vatergeschichte fernab eisiger Schmuckladen, sammle Edelsteine der Erinnerung, die verloren gingen in im Ozean der Scham. Ähm, so, I, I guess my first question is, why did you decide to include this poem um, in this book? Why does our journey start here? Well, um, I uh, grew up in Israel where I uh, never learned about Baghdad in all 12 years of my uh, upbringing. Uh, not only the content was missing, but also uh, all the teachers were kind of uh, European Jews, Ashkenazi. So the system was kind of giving me a mirror of, uh, without representing my culture um, in uh, and the knowledge and created kind of a power mechanism of of Europocentric kind of um, um, structure. And so when I woke up and I understood that I, I don't know nothing about myself and where I came from and the place where my mother come from and also my father come from. And I, uh, I, uh, I understood the, the, the inferiority complex that was, um, was bringing me on my knees and I stood with pride and I look to, uh, to, to, yeah, to, uh, to bring back the, the, the beautiful um, jewels of the memory of my community. And it's a task that never stops. It's not like one moment. And so I, it was a very important moment to, to show to the Berlin scene and the Germans and European that, um, that this is a place where my my poetry started to talk from from the from a place for, of a loss and and a place to uh, regain my pride in myself and my community and so I can be part of society again. Mm, so, what role did poetry play for you in that um, and in discovering and shaping? Mizrahi poetry as a genre, which from what I understand is, is not something that was really a genre beforehand. No, um, it wasn't. It wasn't recognized. You know, when they did a few years ago, they did a, a committee, a government committee to create, to choose which, uh, which, uh, uh, which pictures to put on the new, uh, 
the new uh, um, the money um, you know uh, the cash the, the Israeli shekels and they choose only Israeli um, only uh, Ashkenazi poets and when they were asked why there was no Mizrahi poet or Palestinian they said there's no Mizrahi culture uh, that equals the European culture and uh, so um, but it, but then again uh, there is already books about it and there's there's a Big, there's a, it's been now um, learned in the universities and, but uh, when I grew up, it was, uh, yeah, it was non-existent. Poetry was a place that uh, give you a weapon and give you uh, um, also because the big publishers forgot about poetry, uh, but poetry is something, it's very, it's a strong tool. It's a strong tool of re, uh, uh, recreating the self. You know, I, I won a, a prize in this for this book, um, and when I came to to look for publishers, they non nobody wants to publish it. So I took the prize and I published this in a little publisher, mm -hmm. and uh, it became like a, a, the, there was a big influence. I don't want to talk about myself too much, but there was a big influence from these poems about the Mizrahi poetry, and the first mythology uh, book that was written about. Mizrahi poetry took the line from my first, the, the, first, the last line of my first poem in this book. So uh, it's kind of, uh, I believed in myself, although the system didn't believe in me, but in the end, I found my community and my, um, and my recognition. So. Mm -hmm. Right. And I guess this also very much talks or connects to your activism that, um, you know, I mentioned a bit in your biography. What does it mean for you to be also, I guess, an activist poet in that sense? Is that something you would use to describe yourself? Yeah, you know, it changed uh, drastically um, from the moment I left Israel, because in Israel I was part of the system. So when I uh, wrote uh, these poems, I was thinking about talking to the government. When I sit here, my activists change towards to whom I want to speak. So for instance, one of my things that I'm active here with, uh, with uh, connecting the Middle Eastern culture in Berlin and, and bringing Jews and Arabs, uh, Israelis and Palestinians and the Middle Eastern together and to look for our material vision um, because it's, uh, it's more important to me than now to talk with the German government in that sense. Uh, because I cannot vote here, and uh, so there's there's a change in an activism when you are citizen of a place and when you are a resident. Or I'm not even a resident of Berlin. I mean, I have an Anmeldung, but I'm not. I don't vote here even. So I'm kind of an still Ausland there, which means a man without a uh, outside of the land. Right. So it changed. You know, it's not the same. I, my activism became more cultural and less political. I, in the immediate sense of it, but uh, sometimes when I read the, the scholars, what they read, I, I see the, that I didn't change. I'm still doing things that influence the poets to uh, politicize their uh, uh, context, uh, to understand the, the political. For instance, now my, my latest booklet that I published in uh, Aforisma Verlag, uh, there was one poem about the the new birth of the Hebrew Center in Berlin, the literary mm -hmm. Hebrew Center. And I'm asking the big question, um, um, would you take the role of also bringing the message of peace with Palestinians here because we are free here from the oppression of the, of the political oppression in Israel? Because I still want the, this, the, this new political, this new literary center to be, uh, to, uh, to, to strive for a change here also. So yeah, I'm, I'm still in that sense, a believer. My activism comes from a belief, from a vision that I see Palestinians and Israeli living together in peace, justice and equality. And I'm not fearing if there will be a prime minister that is Palestinian and I think we can learn each other poetry. And, but in Israel, I, they, they think about me as a, you know, as a, a guy from a different time, I guess. And and from the community here. Well, you know, uh, I, I also always have opposition, so I also love to listen to to the opposition. But uh, I think the 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 
the Israeli community, for instance, here is a uh, it's both right wing and there's also right wing here and left wing and also the left wing is there's the Zionist left and the radical left. So I'm open to hear the voices. There's voices who are still suspicious and there's voices who are who are empowered and inspired. But for me, the most important thing is, for instance, to to have a talk with my Palestinian friends and to hear their voice about it. So I cannot, for instance. I always think about them in this situation when I, uh, even now, when we talk now, I don't want to, to make a Jewish identity without thinking about um, their ongoing oppression. So yeah, it's very important to me. Um, but still, I don't forget where I come from. So I still want to hear my community also and their fears and their suspicions and it's all going inside of my poetry in the end. Sometimes, sometimes I, I, I just fly with the dreams, you know. Right. Sorry, I just came in those again. I think I, I don't know why. I, I mean, I, I we included a poem at the end where I wanted to ask you about um, your relationship with um, Israel, the country where you were born, and we jumped ahead a little bit. Um, but in order to follow also a little bit the idea from Baghdad to Haifa to Berlin, um, I wanted to take the next step and, and ask you to read out the Mondlichtgeschichte. Yeah, and to come pleasure. back a, a bit, little bit to, um, you know, your family's history also that you spoke about a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before I read it in the German version, it's Umas in the end. Uh, there is a big, there is a, there is a slight, there is a, a mistake, but it's always happening in books that one moment there is a mistake. So in the next edition, we'll fix it. Uh, it's called Moonlit Geschichte and outside I can see the exact moon that I talked about. So it's if you look outside you can see the moon that I imagined in this <laughs> in this poem. Okay. Sipur or Yareach. Shivi minim shelt marim ayu be park dad siprali sabativo sifa. Haval Sharzavnu, Shamlo Ayus Trufot Baochel, Shamlo Yu Hamama שם לא היינו אוכלים פרה, והקובות היו מלאות בבשר כבד. וגם אם דרכי לבגדד נהרסה, ולמרות שאינני דובר את השפה, עכשיו אני יודע שחיי הם חתיכת חשיכה של היסטוריה, התלויה על בב סיפור אור ירח של סבתי. מונדליש גשיכטה. זיציש דתן זורטן גב אס עם בגדד. Er zählte mir meine Oma und fugte hinzu. Schade, dass wir von dort weggegangen sind. Dort gab man keine Medizin ins Essen. Dort gab es keine Gewächse außer. Dort wurden wir kein Rind essen. Die Fleischbällchen, die wären von Schaf. Ist auch mein Weg nach Bagdad. Zerstört kann ich auch die Sprache nicht sprechen, weiß ich jetzt zumindest, dass mein Leben ein ziemlich dunkles Stück Geschichte ist. Mit einem Hacken, an dem hängt meine Umas mundlich Geschichte. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, this is this a conversation you actually would have or used to have with your grandparents frequently? Yeah. Yeah, it took me time to politicize and understand the social structure of it. Uh, and now it's, um, so when I wrote it, it was important to me to bring her voice inside. So now she's not with us. Actually, she died not from Corona, but she died from age. Um, and I couldn't go to a grave because of Corona and what's happening in Israel right now in Germany. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's also, I learned more, not only by the time that I wrote it, but also when I became an immigrant myself. Sorry, just lost time. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so it's a 
it's a point that like try to uh, to bring light in this darkness when you understand that you are like a robot. Somebody puts another program inside of you. But it's not only my story. It's a story of all the people who learned in a Eurocentric uh, system or in a system that didn't recognize their identity. And it happens in the modern time. And I think in our time we are more learning to live with the loss than to look for the uh, to fix it. I think in the modern time they they thought that you can fix it. And in our times we learn to to accept the loss. Um, and so this is I think. I, although I learned a lot about Iraq, uh, for the moment I understood that it's missing. So I, I wrote a lot and I performed. I, yeah, I just published my articles book in Israel. So a lot of the articles that it's about B Baghdadian poets, especially women ones, um, like Amira S and uh, and, uh, and others. So. But still, it's a loss because I cannot speak the mother, my mother's tongue, which is Iraqi, you know. I was just about to ask uh, your and your family's relationship with the language. Um, and you're saying in the poem that you don't speak the language also. And um, how much did you grow up with it? Or was it something because I, of course, the relationship Israeli mainstream society with the Arabic languages is, is, is very complex um, and in many ways a difficult one. So... Yeah, you know, there's there's no policeman to tell you not to speak Iraqi, but the police, the the policing of of this uh, of the subjects of the Zionism was in an in idea that also was inflicted on the Yiddish uh, on the Yiddish speakers, not only the Arab Jews or the Hungarian Jews or the Romanian Jews, for because at the start of the 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 fifties and forties, they were all spoke three languages as the European Jews do. You know, you even as a Berliner. You speak also Arabic and Hebrew and English, and when we when I immigrated, I went in Israel. I spoke only Hebrew and maybe a little bit of English. But when I immigrated, now we speak German and and English and Hebrew and the German Berliner accent of the Israeli Berliners. So we I, I went back to the situation of the Jews that speak three languages as it was before Israel because Israel became mono linguistic place. And the people accepted it because they wanted to be part of a society. And so it's still sad to me to talk about it, but my mom, you know, she, she accepted the idea that she speaks with my grandmother, with her mother, Riraki, but not with us. And now one of the reasons that I speak with my daughter only Hebrew and she speaks German with her mother, it's to, to, to give her what I didn't got. But funny enough, when I read it in... <laughs> When I read it in, in Deutsch today uh, with my partner and like try to, uh, to arrange the words right, uh, the word I, uh, the words that I say, say here, which is "Kann ich auch die Sprache nicht sprechen?" or in Hebrew, it's "Lamot yeneni doveret asafa." It still also resembles my situation, which I don't speak. Uh, German, and this is part of my poetic idea today when I speak a lot about being an immigrant. And I understand that I grew up in an immigrant society, and the immigrant is it's it's one on one hand you can in a liberal society can um, test like you can say okay uh, it's his decision to teach his children how you know to take the Hebrew or not. I have a Kurdish friend who who didn't taught Kurdish his daughter, but on the other end it's also the there's a also social structure of society, you understand? So that, that influences the subject. So it's not only liberal idea of the subject, the individual, but also a mass propaganda kind of situation in Israel, the the bear Ivrit or speak only Hebrew or Ivrit like Ivri, Hebrew for the Hebrew, it's, it's still an idea that that in a way there's like one land of Jews for one people, one one Sprache, one folk, you know, all this German nationalism that went into the Zionism that you can also hear it today in the AfD or other people who think that people who doesn't speak full language are not part of the German culture. So it's something that influenced that and made me a lot of pain. And uh, I tried to, to rearrange my uh, soul through writing this poem. And funny yeah, enough, it also influenced other poets. And so Eli Liar, one of the now known poets in Israel in my generation, 
I always the time when he asked about a beautiful poem that he wrote about his father that used to go down in the parking lot underneath the house and put Arabic music. He said because I was in a he said he was in a in an event that um, I and Amira S and Al Mokbiar read about Baghdad and he came home and he didn't have a book poem about Baghdad so he wrote it about his father. So it's kind of a you give also the torch of fire to others and they give it to their new generations. Well, actually, you're segueing perfectly into um, the poem Ich bin Judendichter, which is why yeah. I would really like to uh, skip ahead to that one, because Let's the question go. of la languages is um, central, of course, in that one. Um, so maybe if you want to read it first again, and then we can talk about it a bit more. So, uh, guys, I, I will read it also in German, but it's, it's written in German and Hebrew. So when I read it in Hebrew, they all, always ask for translation because it's in mostly in German, but it's written in Hebrew. So the, the, the changes between the two versions will be minor in the German version, but I read both of them. Um, it's a, it was written as I heard the poem. There's no editing, no editing to the German. It's, it was influenced by broken German of Thomas Guardian. Ich bin Judendichter. Ich schreibe Hebräisch, ich kotebe Hebräisch, du fragst, warum schreibe ich Hebräisch in Berlin? Voila, lo yodea. Ich kann nicht schreiben gut Englisch oder natürlich kein gut Deutschen. Wer nigger becha. Und was du denke, wo ist dein Herz mit meinen Worten? Wo ist dein Herz mit meinen Worten? Wer fährt der Garsch, wenn er Milima elun? Ich bin ein Lachmann, ich bin schlecht Juden, Immigrant von Irak, ich bin Juden und ich bin Arabisch. Und warum viel, kein viele Hebräisch in der Stadt, aber so viele andere Immigranten? Ich weiß, ich weiß. Und jetzt jeden Tag, ich frage das immer Fragen. Und du sagst, bitte, wir können tanzen und nicht vergessen. Aber es ist schwer, dass es in der Bette ein Sefer Tora bohrt, ולא הוא קל לי. Ich bin Judendichter, ich schreibe Hebräisch, ein Mann schreibt Hebräisch. Du fragst, warum schreibe ich Hebräisch in Berlin? Voila, keine Ahnung. Ich kann nicht schreiben gut Englisch oder natürlich kein gut Deutschen. Und ich bin Fremde in dir. Und ich bin Fremde in dir. Und was du denke? Wo ist dein Herz mit meinen Worten? Und wo wohnst du nun zwischen diesen Worten? Ich bin ein Lachmann, ich bin ein schlecht Juden, Immigrant von Irak. Ich bin Juden und ich bin Arabisch. Und warum kein viele Hebräisch in deinem Staat, aber so viele andere Immigranten. Ich weiß, ich weiß. Und jetzt, jeden Tag, ich frage das immer Fragen. Und du sagst, bitte, wir können tanzen und nicht vergessen. Aber wie soll ich tanzen, wenn in mein Bauch eine Torerrolle lodert? Kann uh, ich Okay, die sich mir nicht verbrannt. Okay, aber wie soll ich tanzen, wenn ich in mein Bauch ein Tor rolle, lodert, die sich mir nicht verbrennt? So, what does it mean to be a Judendichter, to be a Vajir, to be, um, I mean, I think it's really interesting that you're also opening up this good immigrant, bad immigrant, <laughs> at least that's how I'm reading this here, um, this kind of dichotomy that we hear a lot in the media, who is the good one, who's the bad one. So well, what does it mean to be a Judendichter in Berlin? So let me ask you, Maya, for instance, um, when you uh, read it, you read it in Deutsch or in Hebrew, which one version did you read? I first read in Deutsch, then I so went over you... to the he Hebrew, and then I thought, hmm, is this Yiddish over there, or is it kind of a mixture? So it's... Or... Yeah, you're right. It's the it's the shoulder of the Yiddish, because Yiddish was written in Hebrew, so it was brought. So you read it first in German, and then when you read it in German, how did you felt like, because it's kind of a broken German, it's always, it's a lot of mistakes rambling, right? Or you can listen just as a talk, as a... I read it out loud because I think that helps because I think if you read it loud, you can actually really understand it. Hmm. Yeah, so um, to your question, I, um, well, I just, 
there's always like uh, something on you, you know, either the people projecting because they, I don't hide it that I'm hidden. So I was stunned to hear that it still occurs in Berlin, like in Germany, that some people can, kids in school say, ah, oh, you've been hidden. And it's kind of um, also derogatory. Um, I guess you uh, some, sometimes one time they called me from Galetza, the, the the radio of the army, which is a popular radio in Israel, um, and they asked me how do I feel in the International Day of the Holocaust uh, Memorial, the International Day of yeah, I mean, you understand me, and I told them that there isn't one day that I mourn. You when you walk here, you you feel like that the, the question is all the time coming from down to to you because there were so many people who wanted to do what you did and their life were abruptly stopped. Um, of course, not only Jews, also other um, homosexual, gay and, 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 and Roma people. And, and until today, um, we know that it's not only a Jewish story, but as a Jew, it's, it's a question that comes to me again and again. I don't know, at this point, it's the first time I heard about the good immigrant, bad immigrant, because it's, it's a voice that was, when I wrote it, it's kind of an inside voice. I didn't, on the one hand, it's, it sounds like I'm talking with Germans, but um, it's a very private poem. And um, um, because even when he asked the questions, he knows the answer. So it's kind of, um, yeah. I don't know, it's kind of, uh, it's a sensibility of responsibility and accountability. And uh, um, uh, I tried to, in the start, it was a very light song poem and then it became very hard. There was a, was an anthology of Rikan Tensen and Ishval Gessen that Norbert Kron and Amichai Shalev did of Israeli and German writers, you know? So mm -hmm. I answered them in the end, that it's hard to dance. Although, yeah, I'm living here, so also one, sometimes I'm dense, but um, I had the urge to write a poem as I talk, you know, to leave the idea of only Hebrew or... In the poetic half, I always did it, but I never wrote it down and published it. So it's the first time that I allowed myself to... Uh, this is... Actually, this is what means to be a Yudan because it's, it's between languages, you know, this is one of the things. It's about also the memory of the Torah. It's about also being Middle Eastern. Uh, if you are Ashkenazi, so Middle Eastern. If you are Arab Jew, so you're Jewish and Arab. Uh, it's um, it's this Walla lawyer there. It's the Hebrew coming inside and the English and the Arabic Walla. It's also Turkish used Walla. So it's kind of it's everything together. And it's all, it always makes me sad, always makes me cry when I read the last books, verses of the poem. Um, it's never stopped making me sad. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the first poem that I wrote about the Holocaust in this sense. When I, once when I, I have a poem in Israel that I wrote, don't talk, talk about the Holocaust when you oppressing the Palestinians, don't talk about the Holocaust when you have nuclear weapons and it's continuing like that. And because uh, in, in Israel as Mizrahi, you became a lot of time relative to, you said, you talk about your hardship, but you never talk about others. And it's became like a fight between cultures. But when I came here, I could connect to the Holocaust from, uh, from outside of the national, uh, national story, which freed me a lot. I actually really wanted to ask you how your, um... I guess, relationship to this topic, in particular to the Holocaust, but also between Holocaust and Jewish identity, how you're viewing that change coming to Germany, also especially if you're saying you're coming from a family where that, that's actually not part of the family story, but of course you grew in, in a national culture where it's very much a reference point. Um, so yeah, how did you, I guess, how did your view on Jewish identities maybe also change in Berlin? Did it change? Was there something that surprised you in the way it, it's being negotiated here also, maybe? Uh, well, a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> we did like 10 questions now. <laughs> That's I'll why start. I said, <laughs> told I'll you try I to, to, to answer it. it. <laughs> so first of all, about it's very liminal to be... Um, 
uh, meeting the German culture. So the German culture, it's not one thing. So there, there is, for instance, the beautiful change of the Germans when I meet Benedict Wells, which is the grandson of the, his grandfather was the head of the Hitler Jung and he's a great, he's a friend of mine and he's an amazing person and, and a lot of other friends who change and there's no resemblance between their grandfathers or grandmothers and themselves. And also, um, over the time, and I talk about their responsibility, also talk about my responsibility of my father that was wars against the Palestinians or others. And uh, there's a, also I change in, 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 in front of my elders. Um, and on the other end, there is the, the, the bad, I, I immigrated the wrong place because there's a, there's the uprising of the far extreme far right. Uh, when I came here, there was just MPD now, that <laughs> Megida, and then the IFD was so strong. It's so strong, and so it's also um, I see this the new the, the new uh, conservative um, the Jewish identity is, and this is I had a big theory about it, uh, and I wrote it. I wrote it, I write about it a lot also in the Kleiner text in Aphorisma and in Yalta magazine in the few things that I published lately. And when you come here uh, by, by a must, your identity change because you cannot, the national forces doesn't walk on you anymore. They don't walk on you. They, you have to open Ynet and the Israeli media or, you know, and I don't know, go to embassies, events. I don't know, you have to, if you want to be national, you have to walk on it. Because here you're in a post-national situation, even if you are a far-right person that hates the, I don't know, all the others. And so I think every Israeli and every, uh, so you, you have a question about what you connect. So I have friends of mine who, who doesn't, who, who uh, I don't know, connect through fo football to Israel, but doesn't circumcise the kids and rejected uh, Jewishness. I, connected well to the Frankel Ufer synagogue and their community and I go to their events and I like like what I see there. And um, and Jewishness is very important to me as well as Hebrew. That's why in a way I don't really fully connect to the German culture in the way of mastering the German and reading German books every day because I'm still really try to be uh, updated with Hebrew. Um, yeah, is it answering your question? Uh, or do you? I, I no, well, I, I, I think I, I, mean, I answered five of them. It was a lot of questions, but also we've we've picked another poem, which I think is, is maybe a slightly different take at all the questions I was just asking you. Um, and Yudisha Araba in Berlin, Yehudi Arabic de Berlin. Um, maybe we can continue the conversation on this poem also. Yeah, great. Um, but I really appreciate your question. I'm not in any sort of ridiculous there. I, uh, I, uh, it, it, it's, it's for me when I read them alone without before even you send it. I, um, I really, it's always flattering and makes you feel that somebody really. I think poetry is very intimate place, and so you can really enter the soul of somebody and and your question so that you, I really like them. So don't don't be afraid to ask more and more. I, okay. You dear of yeah. Berlin. <laughs> So this this poem, as well as the 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 one before, I already wrote here in Berlin. I think, in that sense, uh, you can hear the change uh, from poems that I wrote in Israel. You dear of Vive Berlin, אני פחות שואל שאלות יותר מתמסר לג'ז של ברלין, שמגיע מגלויות שונות, בלילה מתפס על חלונות נשים, בבוקר בעבודות פארך, ובשבת עם המילים הקדושות, מדבר לעצמי בעברית, ללא ארץ, מדבר לאחרים באחרות, ללא ארץ, ונעדרתי מהשכרה של אבי, ונזכרתי בו בכל מילה ממילותיי. איני יודע מאיפה באתי ולאן אני הולך, אבל גם לזרות יש רגע הולדת ואתעורר בזרועות וגפיים ארוכים בזיכרונות כילד. in Berlin. Ich stelle weniger Fragen, gebe mich mehr dem Berliner Jazz in, der, der aus verschiedenen Diasporen angekommene steige nachts auf 
Braun Fenster, Molech Morgens, am Shabbat dann mit den eiligen Worten, Hebräisch Selbstgespräche, Unerland, andere sprechen mit anderen, Unerland, und ich fällte bei der Gedenkfeier meines Vaters und ich gedachte ihm mit jedem meinen Worte. Wo ihr ich kam, wohin ich gehe, das weiß ich nicht. Doch auch Fremdheit wurde einst geboren, wenn ich einst aufwache, umarmt von lange Gleitmassen in den Erinnerungen als Kind. So, um, we've actually already addressed um, many of the questions we talked about beforehand. Um, what does it mean to be an Arab Jew? I mean, also you added this alongside Judendichte. Like what is, what is the difference also between these two? Are these kind of addressing the same subjects? Or are they not? Is this maybe a development between them? So oh, actually this poem was written before. I think the development is the last poem that the, the one before because uh, there I was um, I was more focused on um, in the end of, of declaring um, kind of a statement and this this one is more the first year of emig emigrating to to Berlin and the loss um, it's more about enjoying um, going out of the country Israel is a country that you ever you have uh, um, ongoing oppression and and wars and terror and 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 then when you come to berlin and it's kind of open borders and um, very cosmopolitical so um it was um it's more it's more this poem i think in a way it's more um it's more about uh I started to understand that uh, this process about losing, you know, I talk with, to myself Hebrew without a land and I talk to myself in otherness without a land, that idea that there's no land anymore that goes behind you. And uh, part of this no land is also, for me, religiously, um, disconnecting Judaism from Zionism. And, uh, and you know, the word, I, you, I don't know where I'm coming from and where I'm going, it's a word from the Bible, it's saying, Every man uh, know, has to know where he comes from and where he's going and who in the end is standing in front between God. Um, but here in this poem, I, the God that I, that I praise, it's, it's, it's the frame that it's being a, 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 a foreigner. I really liked it in the start. Then it became more melancholic because I, uh, I um, yeah, I was, uh, it, it's, it, It takes time to um, to find your own um, place, your own, your own voice in this new language. When you speak Hebrew, like, uh, you speak Hebrew to yourself without a land. You know, it's kind of a you understand what is minority situation that the lesson Kotari talked about Kafka. You understand it well. <laughs> the idea of uh, of being a minor voice. You know that also the The idea that you never can be translated a lot of your memories, you know. For instance, when you sit down with your friends, a lot of what you makes you happy that they saw the same TV like you when you were a child, or and they had like something together in the memory. And then you are sitting with people who who are others. They had different kind of TV, different kind of memories, and so to accept this foreigner was uh, for me a place of birth. Yeah, that's um, something that's really struck me throughout this uh, collection of poems is this tension also between, you know, having a really complex, complicated relationship with, with Israel. And that's why I also want to come to the poem about Israel, or which is entitled Israel. But on the other hand, the longing that and, and missing the family, of course, and um, also in this poem here, you mentioned not being able to travel to your, your, your father's um, memorial ceremony and things like this. Yeah, um, I cannot go to my grandmother now. I, I didn't go to my father. It's something that always like really makes me, you know, even when I could 
you know, I, in Israel, I cannot go to Baghdad or to Haleb or to um, Mashhad, places where my family came from. And uh, it's not only being Mizrahi, but it's also uh, being in the Baghdadi Jew. For instance, when I got married to Charlotte, I, uh, it was important to me to go to the grave of my father and ask permission and to ask his blessing, you know, and it's, it's a dialogue that I miss. I, uh, I like, although I have here, uh, I like the fruit of here, the, 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 I like to go to the, uh, the English word. The graveyard here? Yeah. The graveyard here in Azenaida, but it's still, mm. I cannot, there's no, big, it's, it's not the same. Right. Um, so this is probably a good point to, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and you'll have to tell me whether you can actually read it at all. If not, yeah, I, I can. have to uh, maybe make more. it smaller a little bit, because you will read the, the German, so I have to see the, yeah. Yeah, so this poem was um, dedicated to Ellen Ginsburg. Um, and just not lately in Israel, they, they did an anthology dedicated to Ellen Ginsburg, and they included that, and it was a great, uh, I was really happy and flattered. and. Um, אוקיי, okay, let's do it. ישראל. ישראל, מתי אני אכיר אותך? אני יושב, מחכה ורואה סרטים של מוזיקה מהפכנית. ישראל, מתי תפסיק עם המלחמות שלך? עזבתי את הצבא ואני לא בחור עשיר. ישראל, אני מחפש עבודה אדירה ואהבה ומוות שיבוא, בלי שאקסוס. ישראל, לפעמים אני חושב שאפשר לאהוב אותך רק מרחוק. ישראל, איך זה שאין לך הומור? ואיפה אכבד, אכבד את הליצניות שלך? ישראל, בגדתי בך עם המזרח וגם עם התיכון. ישראל, אני אוהב להיות זקיף בחומת המין שלך. ישראל, כמה תעשיות וכמה צבא, אולי בכל זאת תתני לי עבודה בשירה. ישראל, אני בעניין של ערביות ומזרחיות, אבל חולם רק עלייך. ישראל, גנבו לי שוב את הארנק ואין לי פצצה גרעינית. יש לי קצת חשיש וכמה שקלים לאוטובוס לבקר את נחום, שבחיים לא נסע מירושלים לתל אביב. ישראל, את זקופה מדי, בואי, תנוחי ותעזבי רגע את האדמה. בואי, אני מחכה בשמי באקה אל גרביה. ישראל, אני ללא פנסיה, כותב שירים על פנסיה. ישראל, מתי נייצא חדשות שמחות? ישראל, מתי תפסיקי לשנוא את הפערים ביני לבינך? ישראל, אני לא מוכן להתחתן איתך. ישראל, הייתי פעם יהודי ערבי ועכשיו נשאר לי רק שפם לא מסודר. ישראל, אני יודע איך איבדתי עניין בעניין שלך. ישראל, מתי תתענייני בענייני? ישראל, ישראל, אני רציני באי הרצינות שלי. ישראל, תני לי עוד ג'וינט ובואי נשתוק ביחד. ישראל, מה יקרה אם תחטפי התקף ושאר לבד? את תתני לי לשרוף את גופתך? ישראל, את לא יכולה כל הזמן להתגונן. בואי קצת אליי. בלבנה מלאה של פיוט לילה אלמוני, ונתפלל בריקוד אל השקיעה של הירח הזורך פלוני. ונברך בצניעות גורה את כל האשמורות הלא מוכרות בבור הציפיות המתיישמות. עוד יץ בעיה, רצלת ליסטס פועל דסגדיש טין דויץ'. כן, נתי אסק לי להקריא את זה בפעם הבאה, אני אנסה להקריא את הטונליטי, אבל אני לא בטוחה, אני לא בטוחה שאני יכול. ישראל. Israel, kapiere ich dich? Ich sitze rum und warte, sehe mir Filme über revolutionäre Mucke an. Israel, wann hörst du endlich auf mit deinen Kriegen? Ich habe die Armee verlassen und bin kein reicher Typ. Israel, ich suche Arbeit, Wohnung und Liebe und Tod, der ohne sich hinkommt. Israel, manchmal scheint es, dass ich dich nur aus der Ferne lieben kann. Israel, wieso hast du keinen Humor? Wo versteckst du deine Späße? Israel, ich habe dich betrogen mit dem Nahen und dem Osten. Israel, ich stehe auf deine sexy Mauern mit meinem Ständer. Israel, so viel Armee, so viel Industrie. Vielleicht gibst du mir doch noch Arbeit in der Poesie. Israel, ich mache in Arabisch und Orientalisch, aber träume nur von dir. Israel, schon wieder wurde mein Geldbeutel geklaut. Und ich habe keine Atombombe, nur ein Klumpen Haschisch und ein paar Schäkel für den Autobus, um nach Rum zu besuchen. Der ist noch nie von Jerusalem nach Tel Aviv gefahren. 
Israel, du bist zu steif. Komm, mach dich locker. Lass mal das Land in Ruhe. Komm, ich warte im Himmel über Baka al rabir Israel, ich krieg keine Rente und schreibe Gedichte über Rente. Israel, wann machen wir mal gute Schlagzeilen? Israel, wann hörst du auf, die Kluft zu hassen zwischen dir und mir? Israel, ich bin nicht bereit, dich zu heiraten. Israel, einst war ich arabischer Jude, jetzt bleiben mir nur noch mein zerzaufter Schnurrbart. Israel, du weißt, ich hatte keinen Bock mehr auf dein Ding. Israel, wann nimmst du mich endlich mal für voll? Israel, ich meine es ernst mit meiner Ernstlosigkeit. Israel, gib mir noch einen Joint, dann halten wir beide die Klappe. Israel, was wirst du machen, wenn es der Schlag trifft und ich allein zurückbleibe? Erlaubst du mir dann, deine Leiche zu verbrennen? Israel, fühl dich doch nicht immer gleich so angegriffen. Rück näher. Im Vollmond der Nachtliturgik von Unbekannt beten wir tanzen bis zum Untergang des Mondes, der aufgeht, unbenannt. Und wir segnen mit stolzer Bescheidenheit alle namenlosen Nachtwachen in der Gruft sich erfüllender Erwartungen. Vielen Dank. Todaraba. Thank you. Shukran. Shukran. <lacht> <lacht> Thank you. Um, Wow, it seems to me you are talking to a lot of people here. That's what I asked myself. Who are you talking to in this poem? Is it lots? I mean, yeah. Who, who are we talking to here? Uh, back then I was, uh, I was uh, performing a lot with, um, against the war and, and, and with, with, with workers who strike. And there was a time in of Tel Aviv that there was kind of a poetry was really became political. We politicized the poetry and there was a meeting point between kind of my, um, my research about 50s, 60s and 70s poetry in America and trying to, uh, to look for my place and why, um, my identity inside of it. So um, I don't know, it's a lot of things that are happening here, but uh, it's less the, I mean, there's a lot of meaning, but uh, it's more about, it's a very musical poem. I mean, I, even when you read it in, in Deutsch, I think Jan Kuhne, the translator who lives in, in, in Jerusalem, actually, you know, he's married and he's mm. in Israel, he lives in Jerusalem, uh, the German translator to, from Hebrew to, to, uh, to Germany, to German. So uh, he still caught the music, and that's what I tried to do for the first thing in this poem. It's a poem of eight poems that I can, like the other poems that we read, uh, that are more poems that you can sit and read. But this poem, I always like to take the microphone stand, and it's more like a spoken word, and it's a lot of theater. There's like in every sentence there's kind of a um, there's a director notes how to do it. So it's a poem that try to make to make people angry in a way also to but to make them laugh and to make them enjoy and to forget yeah. that they're angry and but when you think about it it's a very very uh, it's rebelling to a lot of places you know Bakal Gerbia for instance nobody in the Israeli poetry from the Jewish side write about it and when they write about it they always like put it as a victim you know and, and I try to make it into like um like um Something that it's it's just another another sky that you want to have it. Oh, maybe we should, yeah, maybe please. we should add for the audience that it's it's a village, a divided village, and, and say uh, yeah, it's a Palestinian Israeli uh, um, city, and uh, it's quite. I think it's already a city. I don't think it's a village anymore. Um, and or the instance, for instance, a lot of Israeli they don't speak. Most of the Israeli don't speak about the nuclear bomb, but for me it's very something that always, I'm frightened from that and I'm against that, I'm a pacifist in that sense. And uh, we even once thought about doing a, a reading against it, but but we were afraid because this is really makes you, the Shabbat comes to you. And um, But I, I read against the nuclear bombs in, not next to it, but in, a, in places uh, not far away from it in Dimona or Yerucham. And, um, 
And this is also one thing that Israel doesn't talk about. It's a denial. Nobody spoke of that Israel doesn't have a responsibility for the for the for their citizens and they put there's so many nuclear bombs and chemical bombs and biological bombs and so I try to make it not you know not it's not educational poem you know in that sense it's more like you know it's a it's a rebel uh, it makes you it makes you more want to hear it and now when you read it I thought about it there's a lot of things to burn the body of Israel it's something that it's almost like if I read it here and I don't know, uh, Volker from the Grun will read it. He said that I'm BDS and anti-Semitic, and that's why we have to, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's the anti-Deutsch will get crazy. And so, right. um, but for me, I, I was free when I wrote this poem. I tried to catch this freedom and, uh, yeah, it's still relevant. I told you just this year, they published this anthology for Ellen Ginsberg, they included that. And so it's kind of still resonating in the Israeli sphere. And also I mean, <laughs> you read it now. So. Um, I mean, since you mentioned it, I was thinking about how to include the whole topic of Israel and Palestine and all the debates because it's so complicated and, well, if you ask me, tiring in Germany the way it's being negotiated. But I, I decided this is somehow uh, something that we should maybe discuss in a different talk or in a different. Um, in a different setting in, in more detail. But I also wanted to mention that there are also some more poems on the on these subjects in, in the book. Um, you also have a poem about Gaza, for instance, in there, which I decided not include today um, because I wanted to focus more on the migration themes um, that are in your book. Um, but that's definitely something that comes through very strongly and, and that I was very touched by also by reading this. Yeah. and. Um, and in this poem, definitely also the duality between, you know, the, these extreme things you're talking about, the atomic bomb, the occupation, there is so much in here, if only hinted at. And at the same time, the normality, you know, when you were reading the Hebrew, I was like, wow, this is like a conversation I'm hearing in the street, you know, <laughs> alongside with like very um, serious topics. Um, so, yeah, but of course, we can only do a, a short insight. Um, we actually have uh, an, on this point. Um, ah, okay, well, we have one more poem that we wanted to share with you, but I also have someone asking a question, Please. whether you have what kind of, uh, this is a, an audience question, um, whether you have uh, received any backlash um, about oh. this book, any negative or any strong criticism and whether you think this kind of person, because you spoke about how personal your perspective also is, um, whether that has been weaponized also. In Germany? Yeah, also, I guess in Germany, but also, um, I guess, from in, in, in Israeli receptions of the book or from whatever side. I mean, this book or uh, the book that this poem was also first. OK, I'll, I'll say, um, well, um, in Germany, um, I didn't get a lot of reviews of this book because um, there was a problem. The, the, this book wasn't sent to reviews to most of the newspapers, so because there was a problem with the PR. But um, so, uh, but the people who read the book really liked it, and it even sold a lot of copies uh, and towards like poetry books. So I'm happy, um, and it was really well perceived. I was in the Israeli Deutsche Kulturtage, which is a it's they usually bring Israeli authors and Ge German authors, and they brought me from Berlin, so it was got recognition of what we're doing here. And I went to read it in Hamburg and Dresden and Amsterdam, and I was very happy. Um, in Israel, I I got a good review in Haaret, a very good one. They said that it's my mature book, and they really liked it, and I was very happy. And I even was happy that um, uh, the review uh, was there in Haaret, uh, um, and but. Um, when I wrote this poem um, specifically, it's it's uh, it was published in a book called uh, Why Don't I Write Israeli Love Poems, and um, and this poem and this poem Why Don't I Love Israeli Love Poems Why Don't I Write Israeli Love Poems made a lot of noise. People said that I'm throwing that it's a terrorist poem and that I spit in the education system, that I, there was a lot of anger 
sometimes in the front of the papers and in the reviews and sometimes behind it, which is even worse because then it's people who are boycotting you. Um, so I uh, still in Germany, I don't feel it. Uh, I don't feel that uh, I'm so recognized for so people will be afraid from that, but I, um, I know that it can happen because for instance, now I'm writing a, an article with a student from the, um, F, from the art school that was a, um, there was a storm against the, uh, they, they brought a project in the, um, that's that's called easy, right? the School of Unlearning Zionism. And I, I just interviewed the, um, one of the students and I write an article about it for uh, Mondo White. And I know that it can happen to me also. And in my novel that's going to be published next year in Israel about Berlin, my first novel, I, um, I wrote about the storm because of a big price that Berlin gives to Hebrew publisher, Hebrew uh, literature. So I am already, this is one of my uh, fears, but I also deal with that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I just want to add that this poem also, it's a Jewish kind of uh, intertext because Ellen Gisborg is also a Jew in part of his, he looks, he, he says that he is Jew and Buddhist and other things. So. So the, it's, it's also kind of uh, answering his poetry. So it's a um, it's continuation of a Jewish narrative. Uh, when I wrote this poem, I didn't imagine that one day I was living outside of Israel. It was, oh, it's really, it's a poem that I cannot, I don't write anymore almost. I mean, maybe the last poem on the book, but mostly I think I don't write any poems that, talks directly with Israel in that sense that I wrote once. Because once I was more rooted there. Today, my Israeliness is, is, uh, um, is, uh, is, is, is vanishing in a way because I'm not updated. It's like a, it's like a software without updates. So, and I, 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 you know, I, now I'm here. I see the herbs here, the, the autumn, it's beautiful. Uh, I see Tatot every week. I know I'm, I'm part of the German society even from the outside. So I, uh, I, although I, I care about them and I care about bringing in my, to see peace with Palestinians in my time and recognition in Tanakhma and right of return. Um, this is, um, I mean, I will, I will cut us short a little bit because there's one more topic I want to touch on very quickly. And I was yes. told to stick within one hour and I'm clearly not doing that. Um, so let me say, I really want to continue discussions with you on that subject, and I hope we will in a different setting. Um, but let us read out one more, yes, um, but let us read out one more final um, poem because it also links to uh, debates. And, you know, we, 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 in, before we came live, we spoke about like how you do activism in a society that you, you migrated to, what does it mean to be an activist here? and um, I really wanted to close with this poem, um, which you dedicated to Alan Kurdi, um, the three-year-old um, Syrian um, refugee child who, was, who, who drowned in the sea trying to cross and who kind of became the symbol. So, um, Yeah, and I again, to... you will read the German and I will read the Hebrew. Um... So you want me to be first or maybe you will be first? Yeah, if you want to go first. Okay. Is it big enough or should I make it a bit bigger? No, I can read it. It's okay. I, I know this point. So, um, okay. אפילו דרכונים נשברים. מוקדש לאיילן קורדי הפרעות הסורי בין השלוש שנמצא מת בחוף הים בטורקיה. אפילו סלעים נשברים, אני אומרת לך, ולא מחמת זקנה. שנים רבות הם שוכבים על גבם בחור ובקור. שנים כה רבות, כמעט נוצר רושם של שלווה. דליה רביקוביץ. אפילו דרכונים נשברים, אני כותב לך. גם דרכונים מתבלים על ידי השנים נוצרים בידי זרים, מחליפים ידיים בגבולות הלא אנושי. אפילו דרכונים משקרים שהם כמו חדשים, כמו חותמת ביומטרית ולא כמו אור, ידיים, עייף, מחוספס וחווה. אפילו דרכונים הופכים לפליטים כשכוכבי החלומות לא מספיקים להגר מבעד לחשכת הטרמינל. אפילו הדרכונים נכלאים כשהחומה הופכת לחתונה, כשהתקווה נשארת רווקה. 
גם הדרכונים נאבקים לצאת מהאדמה שמתחזה לכרית, רכה והלב, נשאר קשוח וקר, יבשה של לבה קפואה. אפילו דרכונים קמים וממשיכים ללכת לעבודה, וממשיכים ללכת לעבודה, וממשיכים ללכת לעבודה לכתוב בלי לקרוא על הדרך החוצה מבית הכנסת של המחשבה. גם דרכונים נעצבים כשהם מגלים שנשכחו בין בור גלי ים ענק של זכוכיות שפורות. גם דרכונים הולכים לאיבוד, אל מול, בל, אל, מול, אל מול בית תפילה שלא עומד ברוחות. את כותבת, לאהבה שלנו אין דרכון, ומחבקת את הסלע שלא יישבר. זוגה טסה צברכן. זוגה פלזן צברכן, זג איש תיה, ונישט ואל זי אלט זינד. יארה לנג ליגן זי בה היצה ונט קלטה אוף איירם רוקן. זו פילי יארה, פסט אין בילד פון רואה. דליה רביקוביץ'. זוגה פסה צברכן, דנק תיה, אך פסה נוצן זיך אף מת דין יארה. פון פרנטן גשפן, וקסן זי די הנד אן אונמנשליכן גרנצן. Sogar Pässe lügen, sie seien wie neu, biometrische Siegel. Nicht wie die müde Haut der Hand, fleckig, fahl. Sogar Pässe werden Flüchtlinge, wenn Traumsterne nicht ausreichen, um hinter des Terminals Dunkelheit zu gelangen. Sogar Pässe werden eingesperrt, wenn die Mauer Hochzeit feiert und Hoffnung ledig bleibt. Auch Pässe streben danach, der Erde zu entkommen, die vorgibt, ein weiches Kissen zu sein, Und das Herz bleibt hart, kalt, die zum Kontinent erstarrte Lage. Sogar Pässe stehen auf und gehen weiter zur Arbeit, schreiben ohne zu lesen auf dem Weg aus der Synagoge der Gedanken. Auch Reisepässe werden traurig, wenn sie entdecken, dass sie in einem riesigen Wellenteil von Glasscherben vergessen wurden. Auch Pässe gehen verloren, vor dem Gebetshaus, widerstehen keinem Wind. Du schreibst, unsere Liebe hat keinen Pass und umarmst den Felsen, damit er nicht zerbricht. Um, the first question that I asked you beforehand is also, why did you write about passports when we're talking about such a human tragedy? But of course, also we're talking about passports because they're the, the technical thing, the, the bureaucratic thing. Um, why did you center this poem around passports? Um, well, you know, um, the old question of identity in the modern age, it's, um, it's the, the power that identifies us and it's a symbol of, um, You cannot go from place to place even if or even you cannot uh, be uh, you cannot uh, be a, a refugee or or ask for asylum seeker without any papers you know you have to have papers and this way of, of identify identifying uh, the other and and says who is allowed to to enter who is allowed not allowed to enter who should be stuck in Moria camp in Lesbos who is uh, allowed to uh, Uh, to immigrate to Berlin and so forth is a power mechanism uh, of, of some other of an identity and uh, for me the, the symbol of passport it's a it's a symbol of, of something that stops uh, us from being human uh, um, that identifies us in order to exclude and Try to uh, open the eyes that uh, oh, yeah I'm live here I live here in the middle of Europe um, I have my privilege uh, to enter Berlin and to uh, to be an Auslander but um, and there's so many people who are dying outside the borders and they uh, because they were identified as the other and so excluded from the human right. For human rights for the human rights and refugee rights and asylum rights and 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 uh, I want to not forget them even though I passed the test so so to so to Zagen so to say 
Um, it's, yeah, it's uh, also something I think connected to all what we talked all around uh, my writing, um, whether I'm an um, Arab Jew in Berlin or whether I'm a Mizrahi in Israel or whether I, 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 I try to always bring peace to and, and, and show the, the Palestinians as, as equal share of Israel and not to identify them as terrorists. And so also in Berlin, this is a task that I, I got to know through the eyes of activists and through the eyes of, of, uh, of reading newspapers here and, and understand that I cannot just um, be hedonist and escapist and say, uh, let me go to the Bergen and dance and take drugs and forget about those who stayed outside. It's, a, it's, a, it's also a Jewish, uh, it's both universal question and, and responsibility and accountability and both the Jewish one, because the, in Israel, in the Jewish Bible, they say, don't forget uh, the girl, the, the other, because you were once in Egypt, uh, a, a refugee. So there's a, after it's a girl, it's, a, it's to love the, the, the refugee, it's a, it's a big, uh, or the other, it's a big uh, responsibility. Uh, and it's a big mitzvah, it's a big, uh, still um, something that we have to strive for. And also the meeting with uh, so many Syrian refugees here, you know, I meet here, I'm going, I went to, just long ago, I went to a cafe in Friedrichstein, Riegerstrasse, there's a beautiful restaurant called um, Aleppo, uh, and, you know, he told me the story, he told me I never wanted to be a refugee, I had a shoe factory in, in, in Halab and in Aleppo and suddenly I found myself in Europe as a, without any rights and nevertheless he opened a wonderful restaurant but the stories are, you touch their heart and you cannot just go and just, I don't know, write a poem that makes everybody happy, you know, you have to to, to knock the doors of, of consciousness and the soul, open them even from the inside of, the, of Europe. This, um, I think I will have to stop our conversation here for now. Um, I want um, to ask you as a last question, also continue from what you just said. I want to ask you whether you want to share what you, a bit more about what you're working on, uh, what topics, what themes are influencing your work at the moment. You said a little bit about your project of Jews and Arabs writing um, in Berlin. Yeah, so um, I'm part of a, um, um, of, of a, there is a festival in, in two days, there's a reading that will be online with uh, Musa Abdul Qadir and uh, Marta Sela and Kasha Sela. They're doing Uach, they remapping the old Uach uh, through the story of immigration. And it's a very, uh, I'm jo I joined the project as an expert and I took them to Tempelhof and we, which is a um, which is an airport, and we read the, we used the poem in order to fly there in the air, and so you can check it this out of the Uach um, project. Yeah. And I'm part of a group called Ano Nachta Jews and Arabs Writing in Berlin, and we're doing a big symposium next month in the 20th of of, of November in a, in the Retaritarish Collegium Vanzi, which will be also broadcast online through the LCB or Berliner. Uh, and it's about the, how did the Middle East culture um, influence the, the Berlin culture and how Berlin culture influenced the Middle Eastern culture and, and kind of a Middle Eastern union of, of still uh, 14 artists from the Middle East that lives in Berlin and, and Jews and Arabs and they meet and talk and read poetry and talk about it. And also there's a very interesting panel that also talks about you, Maya, because it's Arab Jews meeting German Jews and um, gonna be very interesting with Esther Dichereit and Anna Shapiro and others. Um, yeah, what I'm doing, I just published a little booklet called Bleiben of Widerstein about, with an article that deals with all the questions we talked about, whether I'm, who is, belongs to the German culture, so also if I belong to the German culture and 
also about the new literary uh, center in Berlin with new poems and one new broken poem. Um, mm -hmm. So this you can also find on my uh, page. And um, I'm very excited. I have a new novel in, in, next, in January in Israel and I hope to bring it also to Berlin and kind of negotiations with publishers here. And a new poetry book. So uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a time. Although there's a terrible pandemic around us and it freaks me out and others, but still I thanks God and thanks Berlin for having the creativity. And I'm a father, so after the time I'm with my child here in the Spielplatz, so in in return playing. So this is what I actually doing other writing, uh, being with my child or uh, being with my uh, partner and enjoying the time to with her. I want to thank you, Maya, for this uh, lovely journey in my poems. I, uh, I mean, your perspective is new for me, and I learned a lot. So uh, thank you for the work and all the the readings you did to to the poems. Thank you so much for for sharing with that uh, your thoughts, your poetry. Um, to me, it was also a really beautiful experience uh, reading this book, and a great privilege to talk to you. Um, and like I said, I hope we can continue it in a different setting. Um, and thank and you for the Migration Festival also, which is doing so many things. I mean, I, every day you have a different event and so happy that you went from being physical to being online because it's, it's, it feels like you have so much you know, energy doing the online. I, I, uh, it's inspiring. And I, uh, yeah, I, th those of you watching us, tune to Migration and, and check the all events this month. And, yeah, thank exactly. you and the others who worked so. Thank you. We, we didn't plan this, by the way. This was spontaneous. Um, but yeah, shameless plug for more migration events coming up. Um, find us on Instagram and find us on Facebook, Migration Dog Festival. Um, next live stream is happening on Saturday evening. Thank you again, Mati, so much. Um, and we'll keep following your work. And um, yeah, we, we hope to see you very soon again, also on stage and in real life. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, Thank you very thank much. Thank you all for joining in. Thank, thank you, you all for the listening. Crowds, the ones who watched. <laughs> have a good night. Yeah, have a good night. Laila Tov. Ma salame. Ma salame.